What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and this is actually my first link up with 24K Golden. We started a new series. He's actually responsible for the name. He gave it a name, and we're making history right here, man. I'm excited to talk to him. If y'all don't know with 24K Golden, do you call it? Do you ever say it carrot, or you all say no? I just 24K. 24K. Yeah. If you ever, if you don't know who this man is, man, look, he's an artist who's been in this game for four years, but he has a track that cr went crazy on the TikTok. 14 million views on the um, YouTube video. I haven't even checked the Spotify. It is 14 million views on the YouTube video. I'm sure it's, it's crazy on Spotify right now. And look, in this interview, we're just going to talk about how he got here. He, he's been so grateful to offer to drop a lot of knowledge and, and kind of tell his story. So 24K, what's up, bro? How you doing? How you feeling, man? Good morning. Good, good, man. I already told you that I like the, I like the, uh, the skateboard in the background. You want to set the vibe of where you are right now? Exactly. So I'm in my apartment, downtown LA right now. Got some anime on the wall. I won't show it too much so we can make sure this get monetized. <laughs> but <laughs> For you know, real? just chilling. Yeah, just woke up chilling in LA. Okay. So as a matter of fact, I went ahead and checked. The Spotify has 88 million right now. 88 million plus. You know, nothing to sneeze at. Light work though. Yes, and well, I want to, like before we even get into that and how that that took off and you, you're at where you are right now, man. Let's go back. Cause you said, you know, you've been in it for four years. What made you want to rap in the first place? So I would say I always had a passion for music. It was more just kind of finding out what role I wanted to, to, to play in music. You know, middle school, mm -hmm. I tried out, you know, playing around with, with garage bands and stuff like that, producer stuff. But I was always kind of a, a charismatic person. I like, I like, attention you know I like being in front of the scenes I like entertaining people making them laugh making them feel good and once I had the confidence um I was like yo I should be an artist and I had a mentor that had a he was an artist as well uh in San Francisco Paperboy and he had a, a studio yeah. and I'd known him for a couple of years and finally when I was a sophomore in high school he was like yo you want to make a track we got the studio right here and I just mm -hmm. kind of hopped on that opportunity immediately Dope, dope. It was, um, let me see. So at that time, because I'm going to go ahead and speed up to the fact that you got that. I, I just recently saw your, uh, the dropped out of college video, which is crazy. Yeah. So now it makes me want to ask, were you in college at this time? Did you actually go to college? Yeah. So after high school, uh, after I graduated high school, I got a full scholarship to USC for business. And I was like, I get to live in LA for free. I get to eat in LA for free, meet cool people, <laughs> learn some shit. Yeah. And, and this is the best city for music. So worst case scenario, I'm gonna I'm a give it my all and I'll leave a, a great school with a business degree, but shit ended up going my way. So I'm happy about that. Yo, yeah, that's crazy. I, I didn't expect that the full ride. So you, we already know that you sharp, man. Like you already know what you're doing. You smart moving throughout the game. Did you play any sports or anything while you were in high school? Nah, I never played sports. I was always like, I was kind of like chubby and short until like sophomore, junior year of high school. And I just like, hit, puberty hit me different. Like bloomer. <laughs> like bloomer. All right. Yeah, I, know, right. I know how that goes. Y'all, uh, y'all be the worst, man. Y'all, y'all come for, uh, go for revenge with the women and everything <laughs> when y'all get <laughs> I already know what's up, man. You living yeah. life right now. I can't even lie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, all right, check this out then. Um, like when you, you went to college and then like how long into college was it? Like, well, no, actually, what was the process? Like, and, you know, you start making music, cool. We know it didn't blow up immediately and you actually did go through a process. Was there any ever any doubt while you were in college? Like, what was that day-to-day they didn't like because you didn't immediately just decide to drop out of college yeah so so I've been doing music in high school from sophomore year to senior year and that was such a, a valuable learning experience just because it's like music grows best in the community and when you're in high school you're instantly plugged into this community of not only your school but if you live in like I'm from San Francisco uh so which is it's a big city and there's schools but it's real compact so everyone from all the schools knows each other so Basically, like, once I got my music popping in my school, I was able to go, because everyone got friends at different schools, I was able to get it spread it across through there. So being in college was super valuable for, for my music career, just because it was another, like, it was like another territory to kind of take over and 
and, and conquer and make my own. And I already had that experience of how to promote music at school. That's like, you can mm. make a whole episode on that alone right there. Yeah, for sure. And so, so, so from being in college, you know, it's just staying consistent, keep making music, keep meeting people. And then I made the song called Bitch, I Go to USC. Uh, and we did a video for that too. Yeah. All USC rappers directed by my boy, Elon via USC, produced by Chris Papa, USC, everybody, USC. So that kind of like made me the school's champion and everybody wanted to support my music from there. Mm. But, um, but that was, that was right with, with three months of being in a, at school at USC, I had gotten a, a record deal from Columbia and I was like, all right, well, this is for real now. And that was in the first semester. So second semester sure. comes around and I'm like, damn, I cannot do both at the same time. So I dropped all my classes except for one. So I could still have the scholarship and live here, eat here and all that. And then uh, once the year was over, I was just like, I'm gonna take a leave of absence. I didn't really even drop out. I could go back whenever I want in the next 10 years. Oh, okay, okay. Interesting. Like, all right, so how did you, cause that's, that's fast. I didn't expect that quick of a turnaround and you getting signed. So how did, how did that, <laughs> and that was after the USC <laughs> song though, right? Yeah, but but they had already we had already started talking about that before um, I dropped the USC song. Was that through somebody like Paperboy that kind of that connect, or did you already like, or did you have a mindset of going to talk to people like I want to get signed at some point, so I'm gonna go find some people and kind of get on their radar? But you just didn't expect it to happen that fast. How did that? So happen? at this point, uh, in the beginning of 2018, I dropped my song "Balling Like Sharif." And like learning from you and a lot of other people, I was like, all right, let me see how I can market this uh, online. And this was the first song that I really created a thorough marketing plan for. So I was submitting it to blogs. I was doing all that and it was starting to get a bit of buzz. And I remember um, DJ Booth, this writer, Herschel Pandia, he tweeted out an article called The Stigma of SoundCloud Rap. And he talked mm. about um, how artists shouldn't be judged for the platform they put their music on. They should be judged for the quality of their music. Yeah, that sounds like Martin Luther King. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. And uh, at the end of that article, he was like, yo, if any so-called SoundCloud rappers want to send me your music, I'll listen to at least 45 seconds to it. And as soon as I saw that on Twitter, I sent it to him, DM'd him, followed him, and kind of just forgot about it. And two weeks later, he did a follow-up article saying, I listened to these SoundCloud rappers' music. Here's what I thought. And he's like, out of all the songs you he spoke about Bond like Sharif the most highly. He was like, yo, I would be surprised if you never heard of this kid, 24K Golden, again. And uh, D.A. Doman, D.A. got that dope. He saw that article, and he reached out to me. And this was before Taste and ZZ and those songs. He was, it was like maybe a couple months before, but we started building a relationship. He thought I was super dope. And then his shit started to pop off. So he, um, when record labels started coming at him for, you know, we want you to be an A&R, we want you to do X, Y, Z, he would tell them about me. And uh, he told Barry Weiss, who's the head of records, um, which is a subsidiary under Columbia. And Barry was super excited. And he, he played in the Valentino song. And from there, they were like, yo, we need to sign this kid immediately. Like, yeah. it was on the phone. And <laughs> they just tried to get me like that. And everything worked out in the right way. Okay. Yeah, I, I can imagine. If I heard that song, I already, I already knew what it was. <laughs> and and it what's crazy about that song is that we always knew it was going to be a hit. Like, I literally wrote that song probably two years ago it, next to my computer as a senior in high school. And when I recorded it, I stepped up to the booth, the engineer Flo. He was like, yo, this is a hit. I was like, yo, this is a hit. And I ended up saving that song. It didn't, it didn't release for a whole, like, year or year and a half after I actually wrote it because I knew it was such a good song that I had to put the right resources behind it. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, so you wrote it and you recorded it immediately and didn't release it late or you just kind of, like, did you re-record it when you decided to release it or did you record it back then? No, we, we got it mixed again, but that, that recording, I can't even, I probably couldn't even record it the way that it's recorded now. Like my voice mm. cannot do the same things that <laughs> it, it was back then. So that was Dang. like a blessing right there. Yeah, that's that. Uh, that was a little, a little bit more with a pre-puberty type. I mean, of course, you already <laughs> had puberty, but you hit it like four or five times and don't know it's coming. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, and it's crazy. Well, before we get off of anything like college-related, especially, 
because you did mention you 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 moved throughout high school and you moved throughout college using what you learned about high school. There's so many people that are in those environments and don't realize while they're there, there's so much value to it and they need to leverage it. What are some tips or some of the things that you learned in terms of how to navigate and, and leverage and maximize the education environment? So I think a lot of people that, that do music and are in school, they don't want to be known as, oh, that's that SoundCloud rapper or whatever, you know, and because at first some people are going to talk shit because, you know, if you're in high school or college, you're probably not at the peak of your music making abilities, right? But the key thing is just to know who you are and know that if this is what you want, people are going to see, people can see you as whatever you want, but it's more about what you see yourself as and the confidence that you bring to that and focusing on the people that do support you and the people that do appreciate what you're bringing to the world rather than the ones that don't. So I would say number one is to own it, you know, be own, own what you're doing. And then uh, number two is like, tell people about it. Don't be afraid to self promote shamelessly. Like when I was in high school on Valentine's day, I took this picture, right. Of me shirtless in front of the mirror flexing. And it said, uh, it was like, it was like, it was like one of those like mean Valentine's cards. I should have put, I don't want a Valentine, I just want Valentino. I'm gonna do that for this year's Valentine's Day. But <laughs> it said, that was before the song. It said, uh, I love you almost as much as I love myself. And it had hearts around and it just had my SoundCloud link all over. And I used my school's free printing and I printed out like a thousand of them bitches and was just passing it around in school. So everyone at school immediately was gonna know who I am. And even if that doesn't mean they go and click on your link or go follow you on Instagram, them knowing who you are and knowing that you make music is so valuable. So that was a big thing in college. I made these uh, stickers that were based off those little, those little uh, porn ads, like this ugly son of a bitch is fucking super hot bitches or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, made it, I made it. This ugly son of a bitch is respecting super hot chicks. And I put my face there and I threw those up all over the college campus. And eventually it just kind of became like well known, like, Oh, that's the super ugly son of a bitch that's respecting all these hot chicks and he makes mm. fire music like you just got to keep going hard and being consistent yo i mean so the things that i lo love about what you said one of course yeah that owning it and not being afraid because everybody has to overcome that hurdle you're not gonna get anywhere without it but the way you market it i talked to so many artists and when it comes to marketing it's so disappointing the lack of creativity that they use in their marketing like yeah. those, what you did in high school, what you did in college, the approach to the Valentines and, and the whole porn flip, like actually creating something that's, that's worth talking about. Like that part is, is huge. Cause again, as long as they have you in their mind and they know who you are, that's step number one. Like you yeah. don't need them to love your music the moment they get to know you. Like that's, it's like a relationship. Like, oh, what's the rush? Don't move that fast. But yeah. Okay. You know who I am. Bet. And I think a, a, a really good point to make is like, you can't just copy what I did and expect the same success because the way that you market has to be authentic to your brand. And me, I'm, I'm a funny guy. I'm a ladies man or whatever. And that, that rang true with my marketing. People could, could tell that from talking to me, they'd see it from the things I posted on the internet. And then they'd see it in real life, like finding out what your brand, who, who you are as a person and who you are as an artist, understanding yourself is key because from there, that's how you build on all your marketing plans. That's how you build out your music and all of that stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that right there, that self-awareness, I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily have. Um, and they're spending so much time. Or I always say, you know, of course, I talk about branding a lot and marketing a lot. But I always say you can't start with that stuff. Uh, you're listening to so much of that stuff that you're trying to create who you are based on these hacks and tricks. It's like, no, you got to figure out who you are. So then you can, you, and then apply accordingly to things that make sense for you. Like that yeah. simple. So the fact you got that self-awareness is big because everything becomes easy after you actually know who you are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Facts. That's what's up. Um, Valentino. Now tell me a little bit more about that song though. Like how did, how did like get get more into the creation process? How did you come up with that idea? I mean, that's a that's a that's a hard flip, by the way. Like that's 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 one of them things that for one is obviously is is just funny. Then people already feel how they feel about Valentine's Day, and then girls are always 
Like this is the this is the perfect era for that when they like don't give me love, give me your check, city girls, and all that kind of stuff. Like this is the perfect era for that. So how how did yeah how did it come about, man? So so I mean I was on that two years ago, like literally two years ago before everybody, all these rappers were wearing Valentino and all these K-pop stars were wearing Valentino. Just because personally I'm I'm very into fashion, so I've been hip on Valentino a minute ago. And that, that kind of just goes along with being authentic to yourself. Like, I like fashion. I'm kind of a fuck boy, I've been told. So it's like <laughs> combining, combining the two of those together and just and finding inspiration wherever you go. Like, it was, it was around Valentine's Day, so Valentine's was on my mind. And I was just like, mm, I don't want a Valentine. I just want Valentina. And I was like, whoa, that, that, that line right there, that's like a punchline. Yeah. That's, a, that's a tweet. That's an Instagram caption. That's... That's a shirt, you know, that's that's a slogan, yeah. basically. Like Valentino could use that theoretically for a camp for a Valentine's Day campaign. Yeah, it's that good. It really and, is. And and it, it was just like, I don't know, bro. There's there's a lot of times these moments of random inspiration where the stars align and it's just like, this is what we're gonna do, and it ends up working out really well. Mm. Okay. So you 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 kind of mumbled it to yourself. Of course, it was obvious when you when you figured it out. And and then you like I said I need I need to record this immediately like when you wrote everything because obviously that kind of mer created the idea of the song did you just then fill in the lyrics special for that or did you think about a relationship <laughs> how did that go so I felt uh, once I had that line I I was just going through YouTube beats and kind of like figuring out because back before I signed and moved to LA pretty much all my songs were off YouTube beats so I just kept finding one until I found one that I was like yo this is hard and then. I don't want no Valentine. I just want Valentino. And I don't know, just line by line writing it, keep saying it over myself. It probably took like an hour or two to write, but it was worth it. You know, it's just like a lot of people think that being a, a, a artist is easy. You could just go in freestyle, whatever, and then you're going to blow up. But this, this is, this is a work. This is a job. This is not even a <laughs> nine to five. This is a 12 to 12, 25, seven, 25, eight, like, like job, you know, your whole life is a job. So, so it's just putting the due diligence in to, to make sure that your writing is solid, your delivery mm -hmm. is solid, your performance is solid. That's real. Have you, have you got crazy with the uh, performances yet? Have you, do you feel like you're in a space where you're good or you got a lot of growth you want to do? No, nah, I'm very happy with my performances, especially for the level that I'm at right now, because I've been performing since I was a sophomore in high school. You know, I was doing performances gotcha. at school. I was doing free performances. I was doing the performances where you had to sell 25 tickets or else your ass was paying $500 to, to open up for an <laughs> artist. Yeah. And it's like all these, all of those experiences combined, that's the shit that nobody wants to do. Everybody wants to be at the big stage at Coachella uh, going crazy. Everyone wants to be at the top of the, of, of the line for Rolling Loud but very few people want to, to put in the groundwork that it takes to get there. And for me, I think why I've been so successful is because I love the process. I love mm. the process of, of getting there. And every day is just a blessing to be able to wake up and do what I do. I feel you, man. I, I like to hear that because one thing that I think about when I think about those shows you mentioned where you even had to sell, right? I know a lot of artists, they, there's a lot of negative feedback, right? A lot of artists don't like that. People ask me, is it worth it? Blah, 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 all the time. And everything isn't necessarily worth it as a direct marketing ROI or something like that. But you can't look at everything that way, especially when you're not at a level that justifies it. But that process still, it, it builds character. It builds hustle. It builds understanding of those small parts that you, I mean, now, like it's obviously that it's obvious that you got work ethic and you understand the game and you research and, and things like that. So like that kind of stuff it is, it's extremely important as far as that process. Now, I gotta go back to this because you mentioned the fact that you found that beat online, the YouTube um, mm -hmm. beat. Now, this is a situation that people, they fantasize about. I wanna do, the, I wanna get, I don't wanna get this beat or should I get this beat because this might blow up or I believe in this song. You actually got a beat, it actually blew up. What was that process in terms of, did you actually buy it? Or did you just, I don't even got the money, I'm gonna record and I don't, I'm not gonna even buy it. And then what did it look like that, like in the background? Like were you, did it, was it too much trouble and all that kind of stuff when, it, when the actual blow up happened? Honestly, it was a very, very smooth process. I, 
I think what I did was I got a lease for the beat first, um, just an untagged lease so I could record on it. And if I, cause I, I didn't plan on holding it for as long as I did. It was just something in the back of my head. They kept telling me, nah, not yet. Don't release it yet. So I, I got the lease. And uh, I put, I, I recorded on it. And honestly, it was just kind of hoping that no one would buy it before I did. And, <laughs> and, and, and in my situation, it worked out because, yeah. you know, once, once I had the label and the management, they were like, all right, we need to buy this beat immediately. And yeah. luckily no one had bought it. Uh, I gave them more money than they were asking for it on YouTube. Just like to be fair, you know, because everyone knew it was going to be big and you don't mm. want to be the guy that, that, that paid $200 for a beat. Right. And then the song goes on to make a million dollars because it's like, it's just not a, it's not fair. And, you know, I, I believe in fairness. Everyone, there's enough bread for everybody to eat. So I got lucky, but I would say for, for people in a similar situation, like first you got to be realistic for yourself. A lot of people think songs are going to be hits that aren't going to be hits. You know, like you got to think what, what is it about this song that is going to make it a hit? Is the melody so, so crazy that it's infectious and everybody that listens to it can't help but sing or hum along? Is it a concept that's never been done before and so crazy that it takes it to the next level? Is, is the delivery something that hasn't been heard that's going to capture people's ears? Is it, is it good for TikTok and you could, there's a dance challenge associated with it? If it doesn't have at least one of those things, it's probably not going to be a hit and you're probably going to be fine not buying the beat or just doing the lease but but you'll know if it's a hit if you're honest with yourself and and yeah gotcha who's whose decision was it to get on tiktok with it um honestly i think there's a woman rachel from digital marketing and i had been doing some stuff with trailer before i still do stuff with trailer sometimes but they they were like well there's this new app coming out and they're getting like 100 million new uh new 100 million hundred million new like users a month. We want you to go on here. We think you'll be good at it. Uh, and we think your songs could go. So they put all the songs on there and I had done a couple of videos just like not really understanding what TikTok was or how to grow on that platform, but just using my song and they didn't really do anything, but people liked the song Valentino and I through through some, some miracle it, it got, the right people that the right creators that needed to see it saw it and the song just kept going and going and going. And I caught on that. It was starting, that it was going to blow up at probably around like 12,000 videos because every time I, every hour I would refresh it every day, I would re, every hour I would refresh it, it'd be another thousand videos every day, another 5,000 videos, 10,000 videos. Mm -hmm. So once I saw it going up, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to make my own TikTok account. And or I'm going to continue using my own TikTok account and just make videos for my songs, for other songs, funny videos, pranks, whatever, just so that like people would know, oh, that's the Valentino guy. And we want to follow him because mm. he made that song. So now people fuck with me, not just my song. And now I can promote whatever song I want on my own TikTok. I got like 650,000 followers on there now in a couple months. But, you know, a lot of artists don't do that. Do that. Um, some people they'll never want to be on TikTok just because they feel like it doesn't be fit their brand or whatever, or they're just <laughs> going to be super late to when, when everybody's there and it's obvious for them. But even now, like a, a lot of artists who are moving um, now and getting songs blow up on there, they're not thinking about, yo, I need to actually create content. I have a hard time getting artists to create content when, when we're making their songs take off. Cause it's like, okay, yeah, I'm happy with the results that I'm getting over here. It's like, no, you need to do what you said, right? Yeah. You go from, hey, I like this Valentino song to, hey, here's that Valentino guy, right? And oh, I like that Valentino guy. Yeah. And next thing you know, this Valentino guy has another song, and exactly. now you, you know you're just 24k golden. You know, like, like they're not willing to take it through that process while it's free and easy, and you have something rec recognizing um, that you could be recognized for. Like, um, when, what was your experience as a content creator on, on that side of things? Did you feel like it flowed naturally for you or um, was there kind of like a few, a period of like bumping your head and having to figure it out? Uh, there was definitely, it was a learning process, you know, uh, luckily for me, I, I just turned 19 in November. So I'm at the age where, where I think it would be easier if I was in high school because it's like organic, everyone's using TikTok and now People are using TikTok at my age, but it's like, 
it's still it's it's not a platform that we grew up on like we're mm-hmm. not being introduced to it at the same talk excuse me at the same time that we were introduced instagram or twitter so it was a lot of just watching videos just always being on tiktok and just letting my brain like soak it up like all right what is doing well what is on my for you page and then also reaching out with tiktokers like you think tiktokers don't want to meet meet up and collab with a rapper like tick most tiktokers are just regular yeah. people that 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 blew up or that want to do social media and for me like being a rapper is like the coolest thing that that you could do basketball players want to be rappers man fucking bro out the pats wants to be a rapper like every time <laughs> you be a rapper like yeah so 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 i leveraged that too to to collab with other people that were more familiar with the platform and that could that could give me knowledge uh, about how to best use the platform too Mm. Yeah, yeah. so so steady learning researching yourself and then leveraging other people's knowledge and flipping understanding your position so i think one thing that i think that's gonna help you win big bro is multiple times out of this conversation i've heard you have self-awareness about your position at the moment and, yeah. and then that allows you to flip it to the next point right yeah right because a lot of people don't understand uh, being a rapper is a thing being a having a certain stigma well, not, let's say not use stigma that's looked at negatively, but like having a certain perspective that people view it, view you as, even if the numbers aren't there, there's still this idea. Like there's some, I don't know, let's just say like Jet Magazine or Essence Magazine, right? It's not a popping magazine or something to this day, but a lot of black people used to, you know, that was popping in the day. And if they ask me to do something, even if their name isn't popping, just because I have that perspective growing up and understand what that might look like to my family or something like that, yeah. right? It's like, just for all other types of reasons, understanding the position of where you are in the brand, like you can do a lot of things that might not seem to be justifiable because of how people see you versus the the regular um, landscape. So I think that's real, I don't know, to me that stands out, man, that, that you were able to kind of figure that out as far as like, hey, I'm a rapper, these people are still normal, even if they got more followers than me or whatever. Right. That, yeah. that, that makes me somebody to them. So um, like, all right, you mentioned Triller. Which one do you like better? TikTok or Triller? Um, and why? I, I, I honestly, I like how Triller is so easy to use in the sense that all you have to do is load up a song, make three videos of you dancing, press shuffle and you're good. And I think that that makes it a lot easier for people to use. You know, they're recently monetizing uh, views and videos on Triller. So there's more mm-hmm. incentive for artists to come on there and get their songs blowing up because they'll make money off of it. But I feel like the community on there isn't the same as the community on TikTok. Like with TikTok, it's like it, it, it feels more of like a social network than than um, than Triller does in that sense. But I think they're both great platforms and I, I do use them both. It's up. just different different pros and cons to each one. Got you. Got you. And when you say it feels more like a social network, you just talk about the level of engagement and, and how it spreads. Yeah, and how there's there's a TikTok community, you know? There's a community of TikTokers that go link up and collab. There's TikTok mm. drama. There's TikTok. True, true. On Triller. Got you. Got you. I mean, to me, that's one of the reasons why I'm bullish on TikTok in the long game, right? I mean, it's not that these other apps don't have their own benefits, but at the end of the day, it just comes down to where are people and where is the most interaction going from a business standpoint, like, because that's where the money's going to go. But, um, all right, dropped out of college, bro. I got it. Like, that was a wild ass video. Yeah. <laughs> Shout <laughs> out to like, <laughs> that, that blew me, man. Um, that, that was, it was weird. That, that video feels like it could have been throughout multiple eras to me. Like when I was probably, I might've been in middle school or elementary school. I don't know if you know that song, Stacy's Mom. You Stacey, know that song? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that reminds me of that video, except in a completely different fashion, but just obviously dealing with the mom and how that, how that <laughs> came. What was it like recording that video and that experience? And then what was the feedback that you got? Like, what, what was it the feedback that you felt when you first dropped it? I mean, just when, uh, so Nick John Dora, Nicholas John Dora, he directed that one. He wrote the treatment for that. And when I read that treatment, I was like, oh my God, this is like, this is like viral material right here. Like every, (laughs) every, every kid in school dreams of that one hot teacher, you know, (laughs) 
that they had, right? And then everybody probably also got a story about one of their friends that had a super hot mom. And it's combining the two of those together. It's yeah. the teacher and the mom. And, and, and it was like the way that they shot it was like very like Brady Bunch, like Malcolm in the middle kind of feeling. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and again, it just goes back to that self-awareness. Like, like I wouldn't want to do anything that I didn't personally like or think was funny. And like, I'm a funny person. Like that's, that's part of what my brand is, you know? So, so I knew that it was perfect. It was super fun shooting. Everybody was very nice, very, very chill. It was very like, it was just a good time. It was fun shooting it. And I think that really translated across the video too. Like when people watch it, they laugh, they have fun. And uh, that is like to, to date, that's my, that's my like most viral video in terms of how fast it grew, uh, it grew and the numbers that it has. I think it's at like, 6.5 million right now Something and like that yeah it, it's been a little over a month whereas that that's half of the views that valentino has in like a, a, a sliver of the time so i think that's gonna go on to to really go up especially once you know we do a genius uh interview for it and all that right right hey i look i'm not surprised man when i am surprised i, w well, I was wondering if you had actually like did that concept through and through because it's so on brand for you, right? That, that was a, a magic pairing right there, how, how that came together. Cause that seemed like, I was like, oh yeah, this is like, he probably just, I don't know, was fucking around and came up with this, but, it, but it's I, cool. I, <laughs> like, I think like, like it kind of goes, uh, another important thing is having people around you, a good team that understands what you're going for and, and who you are, you know, like, with Nick John Dora, he did the games on your phone video too, which is completely different, but it, it's in that it's on, it's on brand, you know, it's, it, it feels right for the song. It feels right for me and having people around you that are better than you at what you do or at what you're trying to do. You know, I'm mm -hmm. not a screenwriter. I'm not a director. I'm not a videographer, but Nick is, and he's better at it. That doesn't mean that we're not going to incorporate my ideas or I'm not going to have feedback but it's just understanding what your weaknesses are too and bringing the people around to compensate for those. Got you. Yeah. I got you. See, back to, back to the self-awareness. Once again, you mentioned the, uh, the dropout video in a month blew up to where it is. It's still doing numbers. That actually made me think after you dropped Valentino or actually, yeah. How long since you dropped Valentino did it take, to get onto TikTok? So I think uh, after six months after dropping, five to six months after dropping uh, the song, we put it on TikTok. And then a month or two after that, in end of August is when it started blowing up. All right, so it took only about a month to start. Well, all right, when you say start blowing up, is that like that 12,000 video range? Yeah, around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, right, right, so right. it took a month to get the ball rolling. And now it's at 860 something thousand videos. So it was just like, what was really interesting though about Valentino compared to a lot of other songs is the, um, the crossover rate from TikTok to other streaming platforms. Because you could look at a song like Lottery, uh, K Camp, that's the Renegade, Renegade. Uh huh, I know it well. Whatever type <laughs> shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? So that, that song has over 10 million videos created to it on TikTok. But if mm -hmm. you go on Spotify, it only has 12 million plays because people are, are using that song not because they like the song so as much, but they like the beat to dance to for their videos. Mm -hmm. So it's important to know like, what, how is your song gonna be used on TikTok? You know, like it, every, every, every sound has a different purpose and not every sound is blowing up because people like the song necessarily. Yeah, man, that's key. Because what I find from TikTok campaigns or just doing things on TikTok, you'll have those different ratios. The beauty is, it's going to expose, period, the song. Even if they like it just for the beat, it's still going to find that ratio and you'll get, you know, a, you, you can get a lot of legitimate views. But if it's very much so just for the song, then everybody's hearing it and they're thinking about the song first, then you'll see those wild ratios of numbers. Obviously, Lil Nas X had more stuff to start to happen later. But, you know, obviously, he's at the billions with that yeah. video and there's only 1.1 million I, I, I think videos created to it on TikTok which is less than a K-Camp video yeah right so like there that ratio definitely but that's any marketing period right yeah. like I can be with one artist and I'll run an ad for them and 
I, I might spend five hundred dollars and the thing start moving like crazy. And then another artist, I might spend two thousand dollars and they're like, "Yo, what's going on?" And it's like, yeah, they, people just don't like it. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's the and that's the difference sometimes, right? It's, uh, sometimes it's, it's the audience, but sometimes it's just like this is not the song. You might need to go back and then go go get another one and try another one. So yeah, that, that's that's a huge observation that I. I I don't want artists to get to the point where they feel like I could just put any song on TikTok. And it's not a genre thing, though. It's not a genre thing. It's a very specific, it's a song to song judgment. That's yeah. what I find. Yeah. Yes. Like, I remember yesterday I was with some friends and there was this new dance, whatever thing, song starting to go up. And it was basically like an EDM jazz song. Like, mm. like I had never heard anything like it before, but people were doing this little dance to it. It was the vi the videos were starting to go up. It was becoming the trend, and I think it'll probably blow up within the next three, four weeks or so. And it's just like uh, Valentino is not an EDM jazz song, and Old Town Road is not Valentino. You know, all all the song which is not Falling, which is not Love Songs by Cash Page. It's like all these yep. songs are very different. You know, it's or it's not Roxanne. You know, it's just it's just finding that it's like it's like a like you could turn the dials whichever way you want. And different combination of turning the dials are going to give you that same result of having your song blow up. One hundred percent. And I know that sucks to hear for some people because the thing again and again about music industry really is life in general is the fact that people get trained in school to think that it's A B C D and I can copy your paper and I'm gonna get an A too. It's yeah. like nah, in music you can copy somebody else's paper. And fail. <laughs> yeah, right. you know what I mean. Right. <laughs> That's just the way it's set up, and then you can have completely different answers, and then win too. Just like you said, those different combinations. So that's that's cool to see you understand that. Do you think there's anything you have in the chamber that you might run back through TikTok at some point? I mean, at this point, we're putting every song on TikTok right now, and okay. me 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 having leveraged my own account to to where it is right now gives me the ability to try try things out without having to spend money on influencers, right? Mm -hmm. Because let's say you somebody has 500,000 followers, you're probably gonna be paying them at least $100 per video to, to do something to your song, right? And if you drop a project with eight songs on it, that's $800 and let's say multiply by however many influencers you're trying. So for me, it's like I can try songs over and over again with different trends, different challenges, different types of videos and see what happens. So. I think dropped out of college. Uh, the song is blowing up right now on TikTok. It's got like eighty five hundred videos, eighty six hundred videos, and it's like a hundred new videos every single day, steady, steady. And then my song "City of Angels" is starting to blow up too on TikTok. Uh, it's like maybe thirteen hundred videos right now. A little more slow growth, but people like that song a lot. So I expect that will have its moment when the time is right. So, oh. so. Oh. Yeah, I, I like that, man. That, well, yet again, another benefit of actually creating a profile and figuring out what that looks like for you. Even if you're not, you got personality and all that stuff. At some point, though, like the, the mysterious artist who actually takes the time to figure it out will figure out a way to how to be mysterious and popular on TikTok. It's yeah. all going to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just what, a matter of time. Who, um, who have you been inspired by, by the way, as far as music goes? Um, a little bit of everything, bro. Like I have such a, such an eclectic taste. And I think that really shows in my music too. Like if you listen to the dropped out of college EP, every single song on there is different. I got like rock songs. I got R and B. I got pop. I got banger. Like just like, like they dropped out of college was like distorted bass, just straight rap and shit. So right now what I'm focusing on is finding my sound more. And mm -hmm. when I think, uh, think of artists that like, I, in that are in the same direction of where I want to go. I'm thinking the Post Malones, I'm thinking the Drakes, like kind of crossing and towing the line between hip hop and pop in the same way that, that Drake toes the line between uh, hip hop and R&B. But I like to incorporate other influences too from different styles of music, especially rock music. Got you. I can see you playing off a little bit of uh, Drake in that brand stuff too, since you're talking about you a fuck boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
it, it, it's kind of funny though. Like well, I remember uh, uh, dressing up as as Drake for Halloween. Like in eighth grade, I had like a fake beard. <laughs> I glued on some bushy ass eyebrows, and that was before I even knew that I wanted to be an artist. But I definitely Girl. just look up to him in the way that he was able to. He he's like a a, a a black and Jewish guy. I'm black and Jewish too. That that used to do acting. I used to do acting too, like commercials and shit as a kid. So it's like I, I see myself. I I definitely look up to him a lot. Oh, what city are you from, by the way? I'm from San Francisco, a city okay. that has kind of been. Cause the Bay Area has pop and music sound, but like there's never been an artist from San Francisco, actually the city that has done what I've done. Like it's kind of crazy to think about and at 19 years old, I'm the biggest artist that ever come from my city. The big, that sounds like a big statement, man. <laughs> it is, it's true. No other rapper from San Francisco has done what I've done. All right. So now this makes me wonder, are there like some area specific nuances that I don't know about not being from San Francisco. Cause like, if you think, think about Atlanta where I'm from, you know, it's oh no, but that's really Decatur. Oh, and that's really Clay Count, like all that kind of stuff. So when I hear about artists like E-40 and Too Short and what's his name? What's the, I don't even want to, what, what is he doing? His regular, what is it? Uh, what's the white guy's name? g Easy. g Easy. I was going to say something else. Yeah. Gerald, that's what I was going to say. The, Gerald, the actual, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those artists, are they not from San Francisco? No, they're they're from the Bay Area. I think Jeezy's from Berkeley or Oakland. E Forty's from Vallejo. Too short. I think he's from like Oakland or somewhere else in the in the Bay Area too. But that that because of because of gentrification and shit like that, you know, people have been pushed out from San Francisco. Like my family, we've been living there for for like fifteen. My, my parents have been living in the same house for the past 14 years, 15 years. So we got able to be locked in on rent control and stuff like that. But a lot of the, the, the culture has been pushed out of San Francisco just for techies and shit because reasons out of our control. Yeah. So th there wasn't really a big music scene in San Francisco proper, like the city of San Francisco. But gotcha. Oakland, Richmond, Vallejo, Antioch, Pino, all that stuff, like, like, that's that's really the Bay Area sound, but out of San Francisco, there hasn't really been anybody, except me. Me and Larry June, we're like the the biggest two right now. Larry June, what kind of artist is he? He like he's more rapping. I'm more melodic. Okay, got you, got you. All right, interesting. It just put me on to some education, man. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I I never thought about that. Whenever I thought Bay Area, I was always thinking San Francisco. Francisco, not realizing the differentiation between the two. And, and one thing about one thing about the Bay Area is that it has a very distinct sound. Like, you could tell if an artist is from the Bay Area by the way that they rap. And and one thing that I was really conscientious about, excuse me, conscientious about was I didn't want to sound like everybody else because you're not going to get different results by doing the same things. So I was just like, I'm gonna try my completely own thing out, and, and it ended up working just because people I think were excited to hear something different that they haven't heard before. But makes sense. Makes sense. Well, you definitely got something different and you definitely, I mean, music stuff is popping. And I see, I definitely see something else popping off with you on, on TikTok. What's your favorite platform as a, as a whole, by the way, just as, bump, bump as an artist, just as a regular person when you're just on a platform to just look at content yourself? Probably like TikTok or Twitter. TikTok or Twitter? Yeah, I feel like Instagram has kind of become more like a resume, a business card, like uh, yeah. uh, uh, rather than like, all right, I'm just trying to look at funny memes or funny videos. Yep. Man, it's so interesting you said that because that's, so I tell people all the time, tick, not TikTok, Instagram is the new website. Yeah. Right? Like that's all it is. So it's not dying like in the same way when social media happened, you have social media, but people still had their websites for a while. And then Facebook did its thing and that died out. Like these other platforms, I feel like are gonna be the ones, TikTok, YouTube is always, it has, it has its unique space, right? Twitter, but people are gonna be the, over there to engage, but you know, run ads. Like Facebook, Instagram is your website, your resume, and I can run ads to it, but I'm not gonna expect anything to build organically. 
off of my Instagram anymore. Like, it's just that simple. <laughs> it's just like it's just like the home base now. Like everybody comes to the Instagram if you wanna if you wanna stay in touch or stay in the loop about this certain person or this certain thing. And if you really like them, then that's when you go follow them on Twitter. That's when you go follow them on TikTok. Subscribe to their YouTube. Watch them stream on Twitch or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And the funny thing about it is, I felt like when tw- uh, TikTok came. It actually eased a lot of people's mind and anxiety because people started to get into this, like this trap on Instagram. What do I post? What do I do? I got to have this perception. I'm building all this out where on a platform like TikTok, it's like, do whatever. You know what I mean? You don't have to worry about being judged as much. Twitter is kind of the same outside of worrying about the media, digging up old quotes and stuff like that. Like, yeah. You don't have anything like that to worry about, do you? <laughs> nah, I, I didn't really start using Twitter until, uh, like, like seriously start using Twitter until, like, like posting Twitter on Twitter until, like, the past year. So all of my, all of my, like, it's all, like, controlled, controlled ignorance. <laughs> Not too wild. <laughs> very wise, very wise. <laughs> all right, cool, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you linking up again, man. It's been dope to talk to you and really interested to, continue to follow your rise because the what what was the first time what was that that wasn't even what maybe it was a year ago or even like eight months ago the first time i dm'd you was uh 2018 i think like summer 2018 yeah so the 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 black and white you know what i mean the day and night of what could happen in the year and obviously hearing the hustle of 24k like and i'm, I'm so glad you you stay on two things if i have to take anything away from it like hustle self-awareness like those two things and how you win it like i think you're a model for a lot of artists in in terms of not just that front face and stuff but the actual person how they move so i'm really curious to watch where you go branding wise if you flip into other industries you got personality so i feel like you are (laughs) yeah but yeah (laughs) so i'm interested to watch the plans man do you want to do you have anything that you want to leave people with bro yo make sure everybody out here follow me on tiktok at 24k golden follow me on instagram at 24k golden and make sure to go listen to the new dropped out college dropped out of college ep because you're gonna find at least one song on there that'll be your favorite song your new favorite bet, song. Man. hey well once again everybody this is the very first link up linked up we're gonna get the actual title you know specific but this is the very first one uh 24k actually got me on this one we were on something else I'm not gonna even tell you what the other name was <laughs> you. but once again, y'all have a great day. Like this video if you like it. If you like it, you might as well share it. If you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.